Today I wanted to talk about a project I set myself, which was to read during the summer one Sarah Shulman book per month. Uh, so I set that for June, July and August and I read, I did that and then I read an extra one. The reason I decided to set myself this project was because my queer platonic partner Mari, she wrote her dissertation on a Sarah Shulman book and I read her dissertation and I really loved her dissertation and so I wanted to read that book and then my interest was piqued and I wanted to like read a whole bunch of them. Three out of four of them are novels and one of them is a non-fiction book and I'm just going to go through and talk about my thoughts and what they're about. I'm going to go in the order that I read them. So the first one was Girls, Visions and Everything and this is the one that Mari wrote her dissertation on. It's about Lila, Lila who is a wandering dyke in New York and she's sort of looking for meaning in her life and she makes art and sort of in love with people and it's just about her relationships and her life. It's set in summer too so it was really good timing for me to read it. I read it like whilst I was on holiday and it's very hot so is the book in more than one meaning of the word. It's just a really lovely like exploration of this like one lesbian's life and experiences. So I gave this five stars and I would definitely recommend it. Out of all of the novels I've read of hers I would say this is probably the best one. It's really fun and it's quick to get through and it's full of hot dyke sex so why wouldn't you pick that up? I felt a bit ambiguous about the ending but I actually think that gave the book a bit more depth than if the ending happened in a different way. I don't want to give anything away. So there's that. Well, after Girls, Visions and Everything, I read After Dolores, which looks like this. A On the front cover it says it's a thriller. I don't normally read thrillers, so like I didn't go into this thinking I would like love it that much, but I also obviously had just had read Girls, Visions and Everything in June, so I was like thinking it would be good. Um, but I also kind of don't think that you can have like feminist thrillers unless it's like a revenge story because it's just a bit uncomfortable to read a story that's sort of like about drama and suspense and it revolves around like the dead body of a woman when like we know that violence against women happens all the time and stuff like I just find it hard to like actually enjoy that story because I just think it's like a symptom of being like desensitized to women's deaths and like and I also found that the narrator was quite judgmental and I don't think it's stuff that like Sarah Shulman actually believes but like the narrator says stuff about like uh, people who are addicts um, and is like really negative about that. Also I, I just felt like the relationship between some of the characters was just really inappropriate. Though like the age difference was like really really big. It just made me very uncomfortable. There was some really good writing, just like Girls Visions and Everything. Sarah Shulman writes in this like very simple clear style but there, there are also these moments of poeticism which are really beautiful and they sort of cut through into you. <laughs> They feel like sometimes so there are still definitely moments of that in this i just felt like the story wasn't very good it revolves uh, around uh the death of this punkette this girl and the narrator sort of obsesses over her and her death and who did it and stuff so next i read a non-fiction book and this is the bonus one i read in july it's called The Gentrification of the Mind, Witness to a Lost Imagination, and this is something that Mari read for her dissertation, and so it's Mari's copy, along with Girls' Visions and everything, and I think it's an incredible non-fiction book. It's basically about the way that AIDS, the AIDS crisis, affect, affected gentrification, specifically in America and in New York, but also just in general about the way it has distorted and warped and accelerated gentrification, not only of spaces in terms of you know money rent that type of thing but also of the mind and how it's affected the way we think the way we create art uh, it, it critiques like universities and, and MFAs and and the way that art has become so much more about form than about what you're actually genuinely saying and how that is a form of gentrification of art an art practice and I really really liked it as somebody who's like, uh, interested in art and also who makes art and maybe it would be an artist is artistic I thought it was a really important thing for me to read as well as just like in it's so interesting and like it <laughs> It's obviously very very sad and devastating because it's literally about the way that you know there were these neighborhoods of gay artists and they just died and their 
art and their presence in an artistic scene is then lost forever and ever and that irreconcilably affects culture and how it was made and created and sustained and uh, yeah it's big, it's a big big sad book but uh, very big interesting intelligent and like insightful book too <laughs> yeah i would really really recommend this especially if you're an artist especially if you're gay especially if you're a gay artist especially if you're interested in the history of gay creation and gay death i mean of like massive content warnings for like aids and and, and a homophobic government neglect basically just death and grief and trauma, like the trauma of living with that grief. Um, at the beginning of the introduction, Shulman talks about this like disconnect between queers now and queers then, uh, and especially like the queers that survived, and it's very sad and tender, and uh, maybe it's a way to, for like the current queer generation of like so-called radical artists to really consider their position and the way that we can more authentically connect with elders and also keep telling histories and stories about our communities and get justice in some small ways for the people who died needlessly and in such massive massive numbers very intense book but just yeah so so good so the next book i read in august this is empathy and um i love this cover that's partially why i bought this because i just oh, i love this cover so much the other thing i liked about it because i'm a massive narcissist is the main character is called anna o and my name is anna so i guess it's a novel about being gay and psychoanalysis it's got two characters one is the therapist and one is Anna O. It's a weird fragmented experimental novel. It sort of maybe fits a little bit into the vein of like Kathy Acker's writing. So this book is sort of about self-exploration I guess and you know psychoanalysis and also families and our relationships with our families. And I'm not a fan of psychoanalysis so that was interesting for me. It does come out okay in the end. I thought this was better than After Dolores and again there is that like really amazing prose that catches you up in its beautifulness and like catches you up and sort of like surprises you in this casual way with really like lyrical sentiment and truthful observation. Um, this is also told in like different forms. The reason why I would say it's a bit like Akka or like experimental hybrid writing is because there's like scripts. This is like a script of a scene and there's also like uh, an essay at one point. This is more script. I, I wouldn't really recommend this unless you like psychoanalysis I guess and you want to read about it from like a lesbian perspective. Those are the books that I read. I have two more that I bought uh, that I would like to read. The Sophie Horowitz story which was her first novel I think which looks like this. It's about a reporter on the trail of radical feminist bank robbers. And then I have Rat Bohemia. To conclude, everybody should read this one, The Gentrification of the Mind, and this one, Girls, Visions and Everything. Although I do think you should probably read it in some of those other books that I talked about. I will see you next time, slash whenever I see you. Bye!